Amanda here from createyourfuture.co. So today I have Christina joining me. Hi, Christina. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> Hey guys, we have a really exciting video on how to manifest a commitment. So yeah, we are going to dive into that. I'm going to share my success story with Andrew for anyone who actually hasn't heard it. So really excited to share that. And well, guys, you know what? Everybody likes a sale. And guess what? Christina's coaching right now is up to 50% off. Okay. So definitely check out um, the link in the description. She's got so many amazing success stories for her clients. Everyone absolutely loves her. People are referring her to their friends. They're finding their blocks. They're getting movement. So incredibly exciting. And guys, remember, um, also, if you like a sale, we do have a mailing list. The link is in the description below. Please sign up for it if you're interested in any promotions discounts. Um, if you're interested when Katie launches, launches her meditations, which she is going to be launching, any sales we have on bundles, coaching, I mean, definitely join the mailing, mailing list so you can get those coupon codes and stuff. Um, as well as we're having a contest, you know the drill, 100,000 subscribers, and we're giving out some free coaching session. The details are in the description below. Guys, we're doing the contest because when you share our channel with other people, you actually make your life easier. You know, it's funny. I had somebody in my life that would complain like crazy. And and I was just like, hey, watch my coach's videos. And guess what? They completely changed as a person and they got totally into law of assumption. And I can say now interacting with them is so much more pleasant because now they know everyone is you pushed out and the conversations are so much better. So we're doing this because we want to help everybody in the world spread this message, everybody to have what they want. So they, for instance, I was at a grocery store a week or so ago and there was like a guy that was 80 years old working at say on and he really didn't want to work there and I could tell you know he's supposed to be retired and he was just that's what he created in his life and imagine if somebody would have showed him this or taught him this he could totally change his life and have what he wants so yeah it's a gift that we're giving each other that you know to to be better because we can all have what we want so yeah we're just asking you to help spread the word if you want so and rewarding people for doing it because we want everybody to have what they want like we do right so yes let's dive into this okay my success story for my commitment so as you guys know i mean you know i was dating andrew for quite some time and we were in a serious commitment like i created that he would come over every day have dinner with me after work and then you know at one point i was like okay look at i want to move in with him he like basically never goes home anyway so i want to live with him i don't want to live alone anymore i want to be with him and you know what ended up happening was is i was like kind of bringing it up and he was saying no and it was starting to frustrate me so then what i ended up doing one day it was a sunday i remember this i was like you know well, well, why don't you want to live with me? And I ended up confronting him, which ended up sort of pushing him away. And he said, because, you know what, I've been in a relation married before and, you know, it didn't work out and I don't want to do that again. And, you know, I remember in that moment, absolutely crying. And I remember him saying to me, because I was reacting, because I was upset, right? And I was thinking to myself, well, then why am I even in this relationship? I'm wasting my time. You know, I had those thoughts. And then I remember him saying, well, do you want me to leave? And then in that moment, I thought to myself, I was like, no, I, I don't actually want you to leave. I'm like, I like our relationship the way it is. And if you're not ready to live with me, that's fine. So in that moment, I needed to really just put like my ego aside and not throw the baby out with the bathwater because at the end of the day, it wasn't him. It was me. I created that story. I was holding that story about him. And then he was just reflecting it back to me. So of course, I would never suggest having a relationship talk with anybody because you push them away. You cause resistance because if you thought they wanted to be in a relationship and a commitment with you, you wouldn't have to say, why aren't we in a commitment? If you were already coming from, they want to be with me. So I was thinking he didn't want to move in with me. I wasn't sure why. So I confronted him. And of course that put a little bit of a wedge and yeah. I had to take so many days to actually clean that up. <laughs> Right. It took me five days to, because, of course, after you do that, you have this like, you know, confront them with it and have the relationship talk. It's like, OK, now you're just like, no, they're fine with it. You know, and then I had to over intend, you know, that him getting over that block, that nugget of gold that he gave me. Right. So. What I did was for the next five days and we were looking at condos together, but for him, not for me. So for five days, I'm driving around with him, looking at all these condos that he wants to buy. And I was pretending in my mind that 
he was going to say we were going to live together and I was working on the other story that he's, you know, ready to be in another relationship and over his baggage. And then it got worse. One day he starts taking me to, you know, building condos that are for 55 plus only and I'm not 55 and I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, what? <laughs> this is getting worse by the minute. I'm like, first of all, it wasn't bad enough that he was like, we're just looking for me, you know, himself. But now he's looking at buildings where I can't even pretend I could live there because I'm not allowed because I'm over 55. But I kept my cool and I said, you know what? It's fine. It's all going to work out. And I kept on my intentions, you know, and then it was five days later, it was a Saturday and we were looking at condos for him, 55 plus and everything. And I remember we were sitting at lunch and I had my phone out and I was answering, you know, some comments on Reddit and the YouTube channel and stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, he said, you know what? And I looked up and I said, what? He's like, I've been thinking. And I said, what? He goes, you're not crazy. And I'm like, duh, I know that. And he was like, well, I think we should move in together. And I was like, what? I ran to the bathroom. I screamed in the bathroom, came back really excited, but I try not to show it, you know, and at that moment it was fine. So in the one big thing that I didn't do was ask him, what made you change your mind? You know what I mean? Because what's the point of that? You know what I mean? And why press the subject anymore? I got what I wanted and it was going to happen. And the funny thing was, is from that moment, it basically was like overnight that it happened. It happened so quickly. So you know, when it comes to manifesting a commitment, Christina's got some excellent tips that can actually help you to do this as well. So in my case, it wasn't a self-concept issue. Mine was a story I projected about others because everyone is you pushed out. But of course, like Christina's going to explain right now, it's not always just self-concept or the other person or relationships, right? That's so true. And I think also like you uh, told already in your story, it's... Um, as everyone can see and as you got like after some days uh the things you wished for and you wanted and intended to see is like you persisted through all of it you stayed in your end and in your story and what you also did and um was like releasing also the resistance to um overreacting or like keeping the story still alive uh, because if you had fallen for the story or the feedback that was reflected back to you from Andrew, uh, you could have kept your situation like even longer in that in-between state or him looking like for condos for himself of 55 plus. And yes, it would have been going like even longer than only some days. So you did a really great job at that time. And yes, um, also for you guys, if you have an SP in your mind and want to manifest commitment, uh, there are like three aspects that you have to take care, I would say. It's uh, first of all, um, how you see yourself, as we also mentioned, like self-concept. Um, how do you perceive yourself? Are you thinking that you're worthy of commitment, that you will be the chosen person by anyone or that specific person? Then also, um, what is important, how you view like men or women in general, or um, if you have an SP in your mind, um, what do you think about your SP? Let's go for uh, the famous Jerry. Um, do you think that Jerry is interested in you and that he would like to date you or do you think he's like emotional unavailable and not interesting or interested in even talking to you? These are like things uh, you have to take care of and also what do you say to yourself during the day? Like if you're doing consciously creating and manifesting, that's one thing. But because you pick the story and the things you want to affirm and intend. But let's say you're doing the dishes or you're driving around with your car uh, or you're, you are at the supermarket and see a couple or someone who looks like Jerry. Uh, what are the triggers that come up? Uh, do you see or uh, feel in the first moment something positive? or something perceived negative. And whatever you feel or see is also created by your thoughts. So um, the situation is triggering something up in you. It could be something like positive as you see someone looking like Jerry and you think, oh, that's my person. And uh, I see like birds before landing 
a similar looking guy like Jerry. And this means I'm going to get into more with him or uh, get the commitment or the date that I want, whatever uh, stage you're in. And also what is very important, how you see relationships also in general. What are your assumptions about relationships? And I mean, you create all of it at the end of the day uh, with your assumptions. So you have to pick assumptions like for yourself, for the person you're interested in. If there's not any person involved and you're creating maybe someone new or um, how a relationship would look like to you, you can also start like writing down how would your ideal partner look, be like, and your ideal relationship. Um, these are things you have to get very clear about so you don't get like things in between or like some hot and cold stuff as we talk already in at our channel, like uh, situations that happen, like you get the date, but then he ghosts you. Uh, these would be like examples that you have something going on or a story going on inside of you which is not serving you or uh, you're serving as Neville says two masters and you can't serve two masters. So you have to get very clear on the master that you want or the things that you want to see or wish to see and serve this one. Well, this is it, you know, and persistence. Okay. Persistence, mm -hmm. serious persistence. Right. So like in my story. Okay. So the timeline was Sunday. We had that talk and of course there was crying and I was upset, you know, and then it wasn't until Saturday, but throughout there, we were still seeing each other every day because, you know, if I was to say, well, you know what, you just leave until you decide that you want to be with me. Okay. That never works because you're coming from rejection. Okay. So it's like, I, I had to go back to what we normally had, go back to accept and loving what we had right and then you know it, it, sure enough halfway through the week we started looking at 55 plus places so in in my mind right like my reality my 3d reality was getting worse like and at that moment i had a choice i could have stopped and went okay seriously why is this getting worse why is this not working but again questioning is just going to block it it was like no you know what every time something showed up that i didn't like i had enough faith and belief that the only real reality is what's in my mind and i'm like no you know what that's fine i'm going to change this story i'm going to change it and as it came up i kept changing it. I'm not a huge fan of think of it once and let it go. You can't. You can't because you're going to have your old thoughts reflecting back to you. So how do you ignore that? Ignoring it's resisting it. Ignoring it is not actually changing it. You've got to take it and look at it and renounce it. Okay. You've got to accept it because it's something that was there. It, it's always going to be where you're going to have the old stuff come in as you're changing the story because the 3D is your past thoughts right? It's not new thoughts coming. It's not like, oh, you know, Jerry's late. I never thought of that before. This is new. No, it's not. I thought about it a day ago. I thought about it a week ago. I thought about it a minute ago. You know, so it's it's always going to have that lag and you have to have enough faith in yourself and enough faith in everyone as you pushed out and you got to stick to your mental diet, like seriously stick to it and don't question why it's not working. Because again, that's not a mental, that's, that's the mental diet of rejection and, and in failure. So you turn around and you're like, no, it is working and it's happening. It's happening now. You really have to listen to yourself to find out what your blocks are. You know, that's the huge thing. What are you saying to yourself? Like, sure, your concern may be self-concept. Maybe it won't be, you know, it, maybe it's a combination of all three of those areas, Christina said, right? Mm -hmm. That's so true. And I think also in your situation is, or what I like to do also, if like there's some crazy stuff still going on in my 3D and then I say to myself, okay, it's still going on, but I just have to remind myself and get back into the now and not like three weeks ago or what I was thinking like three months ago, the moment I know, okay, I was creating this with my thoughts. I can get on top of this and persist in this situation, even in the face of opposition and just know, okay, this will play now out and um, the new things will also start to come, but you have to stick to it and not like keep wavering because some old stuff is still going on. And also like Neville says, the 3D is dead. Once it manifested, it's dead, it's done. But mm -hmm. it depends what are you doing in those moments. 
Are you going back to the rabbit hole, which is not serving you and not uh, giving you the results that you would wish to see? Or are you creating something new, taking it as feedback, as Amanda did in her story, and persist in what you wish to see? Because at the end of the day, I also remind myself, everyone is you pushed out. So I don't have to control uh, what the people outside of me are doing. I just have to control what is going on inside of here and here. And here is creating here. So I just have to take care what is going on in my brain or in my head. And this gives you also all the power. You don't have to worry or overthink about anything that is outside of you. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, I, I, exactly. So you have to control them up here, but not verbally, not in the 3D. But you know what? One thing that I did, okay, and this is a huge like thing that helped me to stay on my mental diet was for instance, when we were driving around looking at places and it got worse, they were 55 plus. Do you know what I did? I man, I intended that he would take me to McDonald's and get me a cheeseburger. And that's exactly what we did. And in that moment, I was like, okay, everyone's you pushed out. Okay. I intended we'd go to McDonald's. He suggested it. We went, he bought me a cheeseburger. Okay. And same thing with like, you know, for instance, him bringing fried chicken one day, you know? So when you intend the little tiny things, right. And that are not like having resistance to them, like, you know, buying you a cheeseburger or, you know, buying you a coffee, things that you don't have resistance to with them doing, you know, changing their profile picture, these sorts of things, you know, calling their mother in front of you or whatever, you know, you, you get back into that. Everyone is you pushed out. And I can honestly tell you, if any of you guys have anxiety out there, then you really need to work on everyone is you pushed out and accepting that because if you truly know it, believe it and feel it, you won't have anxiety in any area of your life because when you do have that moment of worrying about something, you're like, hold on, oh, hold on here, stop the cart. Everyone's me pushed out. This is what I want instead. Do you know what I mean? So a good indication that you're not doing a good mental diet would be feeling negative feelings, right? So, you know, check in with yourself, you know, when you think about your specific person and, you know, are, are you anxious about it? And if you are, well, then we need to get on top of those thoughts that are making you anxious and change them, right? Mm -hmm. That is so true. And also, um, you can check in with your feelings, as we said, because if you're insecure, you will always constantly check 3D, check social media, check is he texting, check is he not texting, is he with someone else, whatever, or like worrying, you will find also yourself, it doesn't feel good anytime you're worried or doubting or whatever. So these are like your three indication, indications that your thoughts are not aligned and you're not at the moment thinking thoughts from uh, living in the end or on a consistent mental diet. Exactly. Exactly. So awesome, guys. I intend that this video helps each and every one of you guys and you guys have a complete breakthrough. And of course, you know, like I always say, you know what, you guys can find your own blocks. You guys can create this yourself. But if you would like, you know, to use their coaches as a sounding board, like I said, Christina's having a sale. I did coaching for a year, two years, um, you know, in a course with everyone as you pushed out very intense every weekly coaching, but you know what, it sped up my process. So, but again, you know what, we give away all this information on our channel. So you guys can put it into practice in your lives. If you want that extra help, you know, I did it coaching because nobody in my, my life was, you know, doing law of assumption and, and everyone as you pushed out. So I, it was a great that I got out of, you know, normal people complaining and, and set into that environment. So we create that if you want to, it's up to you. But like I said, you know what, we give everything away and you're able to take all the videos and tools and put it together for yourself and create something wonderful. So, and all you guys remember that you're absolutely perfect the way you are and just start intending that you are perfect the way you are and you can have what you want. So thank you so much, Christina. Thank you for having me and see you soon, Amanda. Absolutely. And guys, thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.